So here in Maya 2017, I'm going to start with making a new project. So file, project window, and I'm going to click on new, name this project uh, what I want to name it. So let's call this, always call it something that makes sense. And I, I like to use camel case, which is um, one word uh, connected with just a capital. It's best practice uh, generally working with computers to try to use this um, type of format, but it is the, it's the programmer in me that likes to do that. Uh, the location, go to folder and navigate to where you're working. Uh, in this case, I'm in here. So this location inside of this, which currently just has this video, anywhere in here, it will create all of these folders. And I think I'll just make it directly in here, like I have with some of my previous videos. So I'll click select. So inside this location, it's going to make a new folder called Master Sword. And in there, it will make the Maya uh, default workspace um, metadata. And all of these fo folders will be created. Okay, if we take a look back in my project folders under my images, this is a great spot to save reference images that you're using on the project. And so here, we've just got a collection of these um, swords that I've found. These are just pictures of uh, the model that we're making that are found online. Now I'm not making it exactly the same as these examples, uh, but these are good reference. This one though is the image plane that I'm going to model from. So it's a good spot to keep your reference images in there. Um, when we change views, I like to hold down the space bar and left click on the, the Maya symbol and then select which camera I want. Um, this is nice because it becomes really quick. You can jump between different views very quickly um, while maintaining full screen size. Uh, of course, a lot of people start just by tapping space bar and then moving the cursor to the one they want, um, which is just as good. So um, there's nothing wrong with either way, but I, I tend to think um, getting in the habit of using this hotbox uh, really saves you a lot of time in the long run. And down the track, you want to be able to work quickly. So I think it's a good habit to get into just by um, changing views by tapping spacebar. I'm going to go into the front view and load my image. So view, image plane, import image. And in my images folder is the, uh, the master sword design from Link to the Past. And this is what I'm modeling to. I'm just going to scale this up a bit. Thinking about the resolution, the, the size of this model. So each one of these squares on the grid represents one centimeter. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, six and a bit, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So it's 12 centimeters at the moment. Um, we could easily scale that up, let's say in a game engine, uh, to from 12 centimeters to be 1.2 meters, which is about right, probably a little bit bigger. So you just want to think about that scale. So that will easily, when we bring it into Unity, if you're making this for a game, would easily scale. Uh, and it is important to think about the scale. You should always be modeling uh, with some, something to some sort of re real world scale. And you should also always be modeling uh, in the correct viewports, whether it's to the front or to the side or whatever. So the front of your object always faces, faces the front. The top is always the top, etc. Okay, so I've brought that in. I'm just going to, in my perspective view, grab the move tool and drag it back. Just so it's not, when I jump into, into the perspective, it's not right in the way here. And now that it's here, I don't want to be able to select it. So I'm going to, in my channel box, so you can see the channel box is this one. If I jump between, if you don't have it here for some reason, you can click on this button. In the channel box, I want to add it as a new layer. And this button here, Create a new layer and select assigned objects. So as long as this is selected, anything that is selected, when I click on this, it adds it to a new layer. And if I hit the V, hit the V for visibility, you can see that hides it, turns it on and off. I hit this one, turns it into a template, which is useful for, for a 3D model. Um, but for a 2D image, what we want here is reference. So I can't select it anymore, unless I turn that off if I needed to. 
uh, which is really useful. I can't accidentally select it and get in the habit of renaming things. So I just double click the word layer one and we'll just call this ref for reference. Okay, and we're good to go. So jumping into the front view, I'm going to start by making a sword. I'm going to go create curve tools, CP curve tool. And I'm just going to reset that. So we're working in three cubic uh, degrees is fine. I'm just going to go through uh, and click these curves. Now, when you get to something with a dramatic change like here, we need to have enough curves to handle that shape. Basically, one or the two at the start and two at the end will we'll let you flow through that curve. I'll just go through. Fairly rough. I'm not going to worry too much. I'll probably come back and rebuild this curve anyway, I'm using automatically using the rebuild tool. And we probably want, don't want it coming to a perfect point. Probably just a slight bend, a bit more realistic. And hit enter. So that gives us our curve. I can hold down the right mouse and go control vertex if I feel the need to move any of these and make adjustments. Um, as long as it roughly lines up, it's going to be fine. Uh, this isn't a, ma a massive project, so it's, it's a beginner tutorial, so we're not trying to um, go to town with detail and accuracy. Uh, and we're also copying just a simple reference image that someone's painted that is also low resolution, so we can't actually make this too accurate. Okay, happy with that, so hold down my right mouse and go back to object mode. So I've got one curve. What I'm going to do is duplicate that by going Control D, D for duplicate. You can see that's made an extra one. I'll just position this in this inside section and then make adjustments. So hold down the right mouse over it, Control Vertex, and just come through and make some quick adjustments. Just trying to line it up with uh, this this extra section. Now down here, we want to stop, grab all of these vertices and bring them up. We want this one a little bit sharper than the other one. Should be fine. Okay. All right, that works. Go to object mode and change to my perspective view. And you can see here, we've got a couple of these shapes. So, this inner one, which is representing the inside flat section of this sword, is forwards a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to select one curve and hold down shift, select the second one. We'll go to loft, under surfaces, loft, options. I'll just reset this so you can see the default settings. I'm not changing anything, just leaving everything up there. But instead of actually creating NURBS, uh, we're going to go straight to Polygons. And I want to change this from triangles to quads. So we're making four-sided polygons instead of triangles. And change the tessellation method to general. And hit Loft. And it kind of looks like it hasn't worked, but it, it has. The reason um, we've got this is that it's working along the UV lines. So if I come into the channel box and scroll down, just click on this NURBS tessellation. So it's actually the tessellation node that uh, needs adjustment. And it's these U numbers and V numbers. Um, the U numbers, if I were to type in, uh, let's go with 64. 
you can see now that gives it enough geometry to flow quite nicely. It's pretty high res. Um, it's, a, it's a lot of polygons for a fairly simple shape, um, but that's fine with what we're doing. And there's no need for that line through the middle. So I'm just going to change this one to one. That basically creates this starting line. It's probably a little bit thick, really. If we jump into the front view, it looks fine. But uh, from a side view there, it's probably just a bit much. So I'll probably just move it back. And you can see we can adjust that and it's live. Um, so just looking at it from roughly the side, I'll move it back a little. Checking in the front view that it still lines up nicely, which it does. And yeah, so that gives us this front section. Now I'm going to lock that in. I'm just going to call that done. And so I'll select this geometry and go edit, delete all by type history. And so now that I've done that, if I select this curve and move it, it's no longer live. It's not affecting this geometry anymore at all. And what I'll do is undo that move. I'll just control D to duplicate this bit of geometry and move it over. And in the front view, I want to reverse this. If I scale in the X, when we go into negative space, that reverses as a mirror. You can see how that mirrors and what's happening is this scale. So if we type in negative one, it gives us a perfect mirror of this, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Just match these up. And so that quickly forms the starting point of this sword. What I'm going to do, I want to snap this sword exactly with this side with this side. Now a fairly easy way to do that is to move my pivot point to snap down here. If I hold down D, it puts me into a, uh, a mode where I can move the pivot point. Now the other option is the insert key. With the insert I don't need to hold it down, I can just tap the insert key. Either way, holding down D or tapping the insert key, I'm moving the pivot. And what I want to do is snap the pivot to this vertice, which is just the snap tool. So if I hover over, it says snap to points. So I'll click on that. And now when I move it, it's snapping. I'll just uh, zoom in a bit. You can see here it's snapping to these points. So I'm going to snap it right to that point, And then I'm pressing insert to turn off that. Turn off the snap points, and you can see with that turned back on again, you can see the snaps exactly to this point. So they're connected at exactly the same location. Uh, I'm just going to select these curves and just get rid of those. I don't need those anymore. So that gives me these two points. Now we do have a bit of a problem here with how these aren't aligning. It's probably a bit more obvious in the front view. I go to vertice, we can see these verts aren't snapped exactly in the middle. So to fix that, I'm just going to hold down my right mouse and go to vertice to select the vertices of this. And this time I'll turn off the snap to point and turn on snap to grid. I'm just actually just going to snap this at this point down here. I'll do the same with this one. Select, select this left side, right mouse, go to vertice. Select that vertice and snap it to the grid. And so now you can see these two points are perfectly aligned and snapped to each other. Now what I want to do is actually combine them. So it's just one object. So I'm just going to hold down shift and select them, or I could just drag select. So as long as they're both selected, we're going to mesh, combine. And what that does is, uh, make them a single mesh. So now when I go to vertice, I can grab verts over here or over here. It's all one object. The only catch by doing that is that these vertices, you can see up here in my head up display. If I drag select over here, we're seeing a single vert. 
but when I drag select here, we're seeing two vertices. And this is a real problem. Uh, what happens if I click on just one? So instead of drag selecting, if I were to just select one, I'll just turn off my snap. I don't want snapping on. So I've got a single vertice selected. And when I move it, we can see there's another vertice on top. We actually want to stitch these together. So when I click one, it only selects one. When I drag select, it's, it shows me I've got two selected. And by the way, to get this head up display, it's just going into display, head up display, and come down to here, and we're turning on polygon count, sorry, poly count. And this shows us, I'll just click on that checkbox, check box. this shows us um, this little head up display, and it's really useful to see the number of verts. So I've got 256 verts in total, and currently zero selected, and when I drag, I've got two. So we need to merge these. With both of these selected, I can just go into Edit Mesh, Merge. You can see that merges and brings up a little threshold. So if I undo that, what I can actually do is just randomly drag and select a whole lot of them. I know I've got two here and two here. That should only be showing me one when I select those. So if I drag select the whole lot and I go into my merge, uh, edit mesh, merge, brings this slider, so currently it says 32, before it was saying, if I drag it right down, you can see it all col collapses and it says 1, if we go the other way to 0, it's 33. And so this is like a, a search range, the lower the number, sorry, the higher the number, the more it's uh, searching, and it's between 0 and 1, or 0 and 100%. Um, by just clicking on the left mouse and dragging with these sliders, like anything in Maya, it's quite quick um, between that range from 0 to 1. If I hold down the control key and then I click with the slider, you can see it lets me go a lot slower. So it gives me a lot more fine control. And all I want to do is change this number to go from 33 to 32. So now when I drag select that, I'm only seeing one vert. I drag select that, I'm only seeing one vert. So that's, that's just one way um, to quickly select things. If I have a lot of vertices and I need to merge, if you've accidentally duplicated something, that's a really common problem in modeling. So if, say for example, I've got this model, and I've accidentally hit Control D without realizing it. So I've got two objects on top of each other. And then let's say I've accidentally selected them both and gone combine. All of these verts are showing two, which is a real problem, because every time I go to select something, I'm going to have this problem happen. It's an easy mistake to make, and it can be, if you don't know what's going on, it can be really annoying, difficult to fix. So let's fix that just with the same way I did. I'm in my, whoops, I'm in my vertice mode. I'm drag selecting all of my vertices, and it's showing me 508. Edit Mesh, Merge. It's already gone down to 256. If I hold down control and click and drag, you don't want to see this collapsing where they're, the ones close to each other are collapsing upon themselves. You just want to see... that 254 is actually correct. So I didn't actually need to move that slider at all, simply because merging worked. So now when I select them, we can see when I drag select, I'm only getting one vert over each single vertice. One vert. So it's really important to have this head up display so you can see and to just double check that you're not uh, merging verts on top of each other. Okay, so moving on with this modeling project. Okay, so what I'm going to do to create the flat section through here. Just double click the whole lot. But I don't want the outside selection, so I'm just going to hold down control and drag select to unselect that bottom, that outside bit. So I'm just holding down control, drag selecting with the left mouse. So I've only got this inside selection selected. Now if I bridge, that won't work. 
because it wants an equal number. And the problem is, I've got these two at the bottom. These will make quads all the way through, and here it wants to make a triangle, and that confuses the algorithm. So I'll just deselect those two. Now when I click bridge, that just connects all of that, just leaving me this little gap. And there's a number of ways we could fill this gap. I'm just going to select this single edge and click on extrude. And just extrude that straight out. Now I'm going to vertice mode. So you can see I've got these verts sticking out. I'm just going to go target weld. I'm going to weld this, hold down the left mouse to click this vert, and I'm welding it down to here. And I'm welding this vert that's sticking out down to here. So if in doubt, you can always just extrude something and then clean it up with some welding. And so that's created this basic shape for the sword. What I might do is just uh, hit, press the insert key so that I'm snapping this and turning on my snap to point. Now moving by holding down the middle mouse button, which is the scroll, the scroll button for most people, the scroll wheel. So hold down that middle mouse and just drag it right to the bottom. It's the center of the sword there. And just, just remember to press insert to turn off that um, move pivot point function and also turn off your snapping. So the reason I've done that, uh, actually before we move on, let's just save scene as an incremental save. It's worth having a whole lot of numbers uh, when you save. Just keep on incremental saving. Um, di disk space is really cheap these days. There's no reason why you shouldn't just have a whole bunch of incremental saves. Never work with one or two files because if it goes corrupt, you'll lose all of your work. So I'm just going to do the same trick I did with this side. To make the mirror side, I'm just going to hit Control D to duplicate. And this time when I scale, it's going to be in the blue, which we know is the Z. So I'm scaling in that direction. So if we go to our channel box, I want to scale, uh, not translate, scale, negative one. Gives, gives us this side. Now I'm going to snap. And instead of clicking on these snap tools, I like to hold down V. You can see when I hold down the V key, it, it's the shortcut for this, which is a lot quicker. Just hold, hold down the V key, V for vertice. Hold down my middle mouse as well as the V key, and then move my cursor over where I want it to snap to. And so that snaps the two ends of the sword, which basically gives us the blade. Just going to grab both of those and mesh combine. We'll edit. You'll notice at this point, we're starting to build up a little bit of history. So all these old nodes, we don't need to keep all of this. Once we've got something we're happy with, get rid of it. Edit, delete all history. And Control S to save my sword 03. Turn back on the reference. And that's the blade completed. Now for the handle, uh, I'm going to keep this fairly simple. I'm just using this as a reference. I'm not trying to make it exactly the same, um, but I'm going to do the handle. There's a number of ways. I could poly model that by starting with a cylinder. Um, but what I want to do is use the um, NURBS option. So we'll go to the front view. And essentially we're going to use the rotate tool, uh, the revolve tool rather, to essentially uh, spin this around, uh, revolve around the spot. I'm going to Curve Tools, and you're making a cross-section of this shape. Just undo those last couple of moves. Just remember you need a couple of points for a corner. Not too worried about precision, we're just uh, just an exercise, and we're just trying to make a simple shape here. C, 
surfaces, revolve. And that's basically created our shape. Uh, and what this lets us do is actually make changes on the fly if, if that's what we want. So if I decide I want to bring this down, it's not too hard to make those sorts of changes. You can kind of experiment. I might just scale those out. It's kind of cool. Up here, these ones would be nice if these just come together to a point. If I decide I don't like how this is um, expanding, like I think it looks better if it's a little more straight as it keeps going along. So, yeah, happy with that. All right, um, so back in the front view. Now, for this cross guard, I've actually found a, a better reference than this pixelated image. Uh, so I'll just load this in. Image, sorry, I want to do this in the front view. So front view, view, image plane, import image. And, uh, which one was it? So this sword from um, a time of recording, the new re newly released Breath of the Wild. Pretty cool looking sword. So just with that selected, I'm just, just eyeballing this. I'm going to scale this into position. Okay, that looks about center. Um, if I turn on my wires, probably a bit easier to line that up with the actual center. That's about right. Um, it'll be fine anyway. I'm only going to make half and then duplicate it over. Um, I might actually just get rid so I've just turned off the reference, so I can select this one. I'm just going to delete and move that back. So in a, I'm in the front view now, it's behind the sword and we'll add this to the reference layer. So I'm simply selecting this layer, right clicking, add selected objects, which is this reference picture. And so you can see what's on that layer by turning it off and on. Cool. And it's a really nice sword design, so I might just try to mimic it a little bit more. Um, starting with that handle, it's quite a longer handle. Uh, my pivot point's down here, so let's just modify center pivot. Just scale that a little bit. And just bring these, probably these ones in. It's a bit better. Uh, we can see the leftover curve there that we're not using. So I'll just delete that. Okay, 
it's got a nice um, cylindrical section there, so let's create polygons, cylinder. Let's see, if I select on my inputs, um, looking at 20 subdivisions, let's Looks pretty good actually, that's that's a good resolution. Just leave it at that. Um, scale this in. And I'm just focusing on this section, this, this thicker part, so let's make that like so. And now what I'll do is go into poly modeling mode. I want to just select the top faces. I'm going to drag select the whole lot and then in the viewport hold down control and unselect just drag that bottom section so you can see that's deselected all of this bit at the bottom and then I've just got the top. And so now we're poly modeling. So if I come into my modeling toolkit with these faces selected I'm going to click extrude. Just bring these up a little bit scale them in in the all directions in the middle click on that middle one obviously this this hilt is slightly elongated um, but I actually like that it looks kind of cool now hold down my right mouse and go into face mode Drag select all of these bottom ones, hold down control, deselect these top sections, so I've only got these, and once again extrude, and I'll drag down. So these bottom faces are still selected, so I'm hitting R to get my scale tool, and just straight into scale mode, and W back to move, I want this to go to about here. That'll do. Just turn those wires back off. Okay, so now I'll start on this um, hilt guard, this cross guard. And the way I'll do that is using the curve tools. I'm just going to draw in the shape of the top section. I'm just trying to roughly approximate where that ends. What we could do actually is grab this um, shape here and go to the channel box and just add that, create a new layer from the selected objects. So that's adding this piece to it and you can hide that. So back to create CP curves, I'll make another line for this section. Ending that one just on this line here. And I'll hit G to repeat the last tool. So that takes me back into Create Curves. And I'll create another one for the end. So we'll select these two curves. Make sure I'm in the modeling tool set and go Surfaces Loft. Uh, the options should be left the same as last time. I'll just double check. Let's set to general quads. So we'll loft and just come into that tessellation mode and clicking the U number and in my viewport holding down control and holding down the middle mouse. You can see as I drag that number is increasing. And Eight. Let's just enter 16, just for a nice smooth curve. Now I'll select this curve and hold down shift and select this one and loft, surfaces loft. Come into that tessellation node 
and I'll type in 16 so that it's the same resolution as the one before. So now if we take a look at a reference image, uh, this sword hilt, this section in the middle, which is this line here, extends out quite a bit. Um, and this one at the very top comes right into the center, the center of the sword line. So this one here at the top is already in the center line. Uh, so this one will need to come out a little bit. I've hit W and my move tool is down here. So let's just modify center pivot. And I'll move that out a little bit. The thing is that's coming out straight. Uh, what I want to do is actually rotate that out from here. So I'm just going to hold down D. So that's holding down D lets me move my pivot. So holding down D and V for vertice, which is snapping my vert. So I'm holding down the D and the V key. And snapping, now I'm holding down my middle mouse as well as the D and the V key, holding down the middle mouse. And that lets me snap to any vertice. And so I want to snap this to this point. And the reason I've done that is now that when I rotate, you can rotate along the X and then you can see it's coming out from this point. So it's, it's rotating in a nice even flow from the end because we want these to meet up at this point. So I'm just going to rotate this out a little. And I'll do the same with this one. So I'll just start by centering the pivot just to bring it up to here. Now D and V, let's quickly snap that there. And I'll do the same. I don't actually need to move this one, but just for demonstration purposes, I didn't even bother to center the pivot. I've just quick D and V, move my pivot point to where I want. So I've grabbed the pivot points and I'm moved that to the end. Go on to rotate and in that X, I'm moving it out. And this one comes out quite a lot further than the rest. And uh, I'm just eyeballing this based on, on the reference image. It's basically the one in the center doesn't come out. The one at the top here doesn't come out at all. This one in the center that's currently selected comes out a lot. And this one just a little bit which is about what I've done. So we'll go with that. Okay, so now the final problem is um, this is not lined up with this shape. Okay, I just want to select this curve. So this is still live. With that curve selected, hold down the right mouse over the curve and go to the control vertex. I'm just moving this one just to make sure this is in alignment with the reference image because when I rotated that, it's come out of alignment a little bit. And we'll grab this vertice. Just trying to keep that nice and smooth. And down here, this is moved away from where I want it. We can make adjustments to the whole lot quite easily. So that looks pretty good. Just uh, back into object mode. Now I'm selecting the whole lot. So before I do anything, this is still live. Uh, so I need to, as you can see, I can edit that, which is, is not what I want. I want to lock that in. So I'll delete history. So edit, delete all by type history. So now when I select just that curve, it's no longer live. It's no longer affecting that surface. I'm going to drag select all of these areas and then hold down control and deselect those two surfaces, which gives me just those curves. So I'll hit delete and that gives me this object. And from here, what we can do is actually combine that into one object. What I might do at this point is just isolate uh, Let's just save, control S. 
with just these two selected, I just want to get these other things in the viewport out of, out of the way. This button here, isolate select. So whatever I have selected, if I click that, it just hides everything temporarily. So that's still there, but it just lets me work. I just hit F to focus on this. It lets me work on this section without needing to worry about other things getting in, getting in the way. So I'm going to select these two and go mesh combine. So that's now the one mesh, but we can see we've got these these vertices that are not connected. Okay, so easiest way to clean these up to select the two, I'll just go into mesh, edit mesh, merge to center. You can see that just combines the two verts. So just checking, I've only got two selected. It's very important if I accidentally have, say, four selected, then I would hit merge to center. It's merging all of those, which is not what I want. So I'll just select these two and just merge those to center. Now by hitting the G, G key, that just repeats the last tool. And so it's very quick for me now using that G key to go through and merge all of these. And so it's important, even though these two are closer together, uh, it's important that I maintain this flow of these uh, okay. Turn off that isolate select. So looking at the reference image, we have this sort of dip happening through here. It would be fairly easy to use this section if I just go into the front view. Um, and what I'll do is I want to see the, the reference image behind it. So I'll turn on this ghosting. So you can see it makes it um, slightly shaded. It's a transparent shader. So this, uh, this curve is just a bit high. What I really want is another curve in through here. So if I come into the modeling toolkit, so it's this button, if you hover over there, it should say modeling toolkit, and this is the tab that it, it gives me. Um, there's a lot of various functionality that can be useful in here. So the multi-cut tool, if I move my cursor in here, this is actually, it's like a uh, Swiss army knife. It has a whole bunch of different tools inside it. So you just want to be careful. Don't go with this active, don't go clicking things because you, you never know what you might uh, mess up. So what I'm doing is holding down the control key and nothing else at the moment. It's giving, giving me a preview. So by holding down control, it's inserting a new edge loop, which is quite, quite useful. And so I obviously want this in the vertical because I'm trying to mimic this, this curve through here. And I'm trying to get inside that deep valley section because I'm going to move this in. So I'll approximate that through there and just left click once and then make sure I turn off that multi tool kit. So in edge mode, if I double click on that edge, it selects that whole loop. Just grab the move tool. And what I want to do is just move that back a little bit in the Z. Now if I move it back like this, it works, but you see how I'm getting, especially out here, it looks pretty messy. We, we want this curve to bend out from here and come into this point. So I'll undo that. And we'd do the same trick as before with moving our pivot. I'll hold, I'll, with this edge selected, I'll hold down D and V. Move my pivot to here. And so what that's just done is move the pivot point for the current selection. So I'm hitting E to get my move tool. And I'm just rotating that in. So you can see that gives me a nice clean flowing curve to get that sort of valley shape um, while maintaining this loop here. Now the only catch is what that the shape that that's given us is this very sharp bend. I'll just turn off the um, the ghost view x-ray. Is that the correct term for it. Um, 
So looking at this reference image, it does have a pretty sharp bend, so it is quite similar to this shape, but something that we're seeing very different in this reference image is this subtle line. If we take a look at this one, it might be a bit more obvious. We've got... So this is a completely different shape to the, the other reference image, but there's this beveled edge, this little shape through here. And that makes a big difference uh, to the look of what we're modeling. Because nothing in real life has this sharp bend, even a razor blade, there's a little bit of a line through there. Okay, so I'm just going to use the multi-cut tool, hold down control and add an extra loop just in here. And then double click to select that loop. Um, hold down D and V just to snap the pivot of that selection up to here. Grab the rotate tool and just rotate that selection just a touch. I just want that to pop out just a little bit like that. And so that creates, you can see that sort of highlight through there, just creates that bit of extra detail, makes it look that much nicer. Uh, it's probably worth doing the same really to get a distinctive sort of hill and valley sort of shape. So these hills and valleys to do the same with here and here. Uh, one way that you typically would do this is simply by beveling. So if I double click on that loop, I'll actually double click on this one as well, so that selects both of those loops. If I click bevel, and then just click and drag on the fraction to make it a little bit higher. You can see it's made these two very fine edges right next to each other. Now in this case, that, that is actually what I want, uh, to have them close together. And you can see the difference there. It's a much sharper, more obvious slant. Um, so I wanted a more dramatic shape here that slowly uh, increases as it flows down. So in, for, for this one up here, inserting a new loop and then rotating it was the way to go. But for these I just want this very subtle um, transition so they're close together. So in this case beveling was the way to go because that just adds a, a line and an extra edge loop right next to that existing loop all the way through. All right, 